believe that this nation should commit itself to achieving the goal before this decade is out of landing a man on the moon and returning him safely to the Earth. It no was a sentence that would lead to the dusty the surface of the Earth's closest neighbor. But to get there, it would take the greatest technological effort of all time, with people like Lee Person in places like NASA Research Center Langley. At this particular facility, we, uh, we sized the control system and the vehicle dynamics for the last 150-foot descent to the moon and the limb. In other words, men like former NASA test pilot Lee Person taught Neil Armstrong how to land on the moon. When it worked, you really and truly knew you were flying free. When it didn't work, it was kind of like a puppy on a string. You could tell it was, was tugging sure, on you. Know. The engineers came in here and they built those craters on the surface of the, uh, of the gantry here, uh, built them up painted them black, backlit it, and they did most of their training at night. The astronauts also learned how to dock the command module and lunar lander in space with this simulator. Its home was also Langley. But Person wasn't the only man from Langley to contribute to the race to the moon. John Holbold was a key player. As a matter of fact, he wrote the book on how to get to the moon. He was in mission control when the lunar excursion module named Eagle approached its destiny. As the astronauts Aldrin and Armstrong approached the lunar surface, we all began to get a little anxious because they had to divert a little, as you know, to avoid some boulders, and they were using up fuel. We knew it, but the public didn't know it. Armstrong had to take over the autopilot because it was going to put the LEM in a boulder field. But Armstrong's okay, Langley stop. training came through. Tranquility base here. The Eagle has landed. Roger, twink. Tranquility, we copy you on the ground. You got a bunch of guys about to turn blue. We're breathing again. Thanks a lot. Four hours later, Neil Armstrong went where, quite literally, no man had ever gone before. That's one small step for man, one giant leap for mankind. Von Braun was sitting in front of me just as the landing took place, and after it took place, he turned to me with an A-OK -okay sign, he says, thank you, John. Werner von Braun was the father of American space exploration. Without von Braun, there would have been no space program. Without Hobolt, there would have been no lunar landing. It was very, very um, exciting to me and such a rewarding remark that I'll never forget it. And so they had done it. Collins hovering high above Aldrin and Armstrong as they were on board the LEM on the Sea of Tranquility on the moon's surface. For men like Lee Persons, as well as John Holbolt, it was the thrill of a lifetime. Everything they had worked for had finally come through. They had done it. Can you imagine how the rest of the world felt? I just couldn't believe something like that was happening in this country. It's just too much. Too much for me to believe. I was awestruck. Terry Longnecker was a 17-year-old girl living in Virginia Beach, ready to go to college when man walked on the moon. We needed something like this in the country during the 60s. Those were the tumultuous years. But there was peace on the sea of tranquility, and millions watched as a one-time Eagle Scout named Armstrong and his friend Buzz romped around on the moon. I was in Goochland County, Virginia, at Camp Brady Saunders with about a hundred other Boy Scouts in a shelter watching uh, Armstrong step out of the capsule. It put chills down my spine to just watch it. Armstrong and Aldrin spent only 21 hours on the lunar surface, but 30 years later, the impression they left on history and the world is still indelible. But what was that impression? What is the legacy of Apollo 11 and the men who flew it? I guess what it really meant was if you, if you commit to something, anything, set your mind to it, you can do it. Well, I'd like to think that that's the case, that if we got together in a unified way, we can solve a lot of problems that still exist today. I just think it's the greatest thing in the history of mankind that, to date. They were knights in shining armor. You know, it just, you take a look at the pictures of them there on the moon and their, and their pressure suits with the reflections off of the face plates and, uh, you know, it, it had to be what they thought of in times of old. They just were knights in shining armor.